Hey there, welcome to Storytime today. I am Andy, your storyteller. I'm so glad you are tuning in today. Um, I have a new book today. It just came out this year. So you might not have even ever heard of it or seen it, or maybe you have, um, but it was new to me. And the minute I read it, I loved it. I love the pictures. I love the story. I love the message behind it. So I hope you will too. Um, and it's about the beach. So today I wore my little beach shell earrings um, in honor of that. So it is called Swashby and the Sea. And this is Swashby. And this is a little girl. We never hear her name, um, but you can kind of come up with one in your head if you want. And it's about Swashby. He is what we would call um, like a recluse or a hermit, which means he doesn't really like to be around other people. He likes to only be by himself. And he doesn't want friends, he doesn't want playmates, he doesn't um, want anybody around him. And then the little girl moves in next to him and we'll see what happens. Um, so I love this book. Um, I hope you will too. It's got really good art. I love the story and so we are going to read it today. And hey, keep an eye out. Swashby actually has like a little pet. Um, so you can keep an eye out on the illustrations for that. So we are going to get started in just a second. All right. Captain Swashby loved the sea. The sea and he had been friends for a long, long time. She knew him in and out, up and down, better than anyone. So, when Swashby retired, it was to a small house on a small beach as close to the sea as he could be. Whenever he needed something, the sea provided exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. Life was just the way Swashby liked it. Salty and sandy and serene. Until... Squeaks and squeals sprang from the empty house next door, which was no longer empty. It had been commandeered by a girl and her granny who planted umbrellas, scattered beach chairs, and boarded Swashby's deck without permission. Oh, there she is. She's standing on his deck. Swashby battened down the hatches hid when the doorbell rang, and fed their oatmeal cookies to the gulls. He didn't need neighbors. He didn't want neighbors. Neighbors were nosy, a nuisance, annoying. So in return, he left a message clearly written in the sand. It says, no trespassing, which the sea fiddled with just a little bit. Sing, sing, the girl read. And she did just that. She sang every song she knew while dancing up and down Swashby's deck. What now? She asked. Now vanish, Swashby wrote later that evening, adding a starfish exclamation point. And the sea fiddled just a little. Wish, the little girl read, picking up a starfish and did just that. She closed her eyes and began, I wish, no, no, Swashby interrupted, stomping down the steps. If you mean to make a starfish wish, you must say this. Starfish back to waves so blue, the sea will see a wish come true. How lovely, Granny said. We wish you'd come for a cup of tea, Mr. Swashby. But Swashby wished to be left alone. So he grumbled and mumbled and hurried inside. He didn't need tea. He didn't want tea. Tea was civilized, friendly, and neighborly. What he needed was a new message. Please go away, he wrote firmly in the sand. And once again, the sea fiddled just a little bit. Play! the girl sounded out and did just that. 
with Swashby's shells and stones, with his buckets and shovels, but her towers kept falling. Barnacle bottoms, Swashby muttered, marching out. You're doing it all wrong. You must not use the sun-baked sand. It's the sea sand does the trick. And he showed her how to dig for the wet sand below. Thank, but Swashby was gone. Before long, amazing sculptures decorated the beach. It's the clam shells you should be using, Swashby called from inside. Come play, Mr. Swashby, the girl called back. Swashbys don't play, he answered, banging the shutters. Boy, he really doesn't want a friend, huh? So the sea decided to meddle more than just a little. She inched her way up the sand and tickled the girl's toes. She nibbled on the sculptures and slurped away at the bucket. The girl tried to grab it, but look at me, the girl called. Look at her, Granny grasped. Oh dear, look at her. Granny hurried to the water's edge, but Swashby was already there. What are ye up to, ye great salty imp? He asked, scooping up the girl in the bucket. With a great big wave, the sea delivered the pair back to shore. And there was no stopping the laughing and thanking and hugging that was Swashby's reward. I see what she did, he whispered to the sea as he was whisked away to celebrate. After that, it was easy for Swashby to have tea with the girl and her granny, and ice cream, and lobster, and s'mores on the beach. It was easy for him to share his special sea glass. It was even easy for him to see that neighbors could be fun, and friends, and family. And when he had a moment to himself, Swashby carved a heartfelt message for the sea. And it says, thank you, friend, which the sea fiddled with just a little bit. The end. Isn't that a great story? And remember at the beginning, I told you Swashby kind of has like a little pet. Um, and so I think this little blue crab is his pet. We see this crab in lots of the pictures. See, there he is right there, poking by when, Squ when Swashby is painting his boat. We see Swashby holding on to him for a little boat ride. We see the crab sitting with Swashby enjoying the sea. Let's see. We see him right here as Swashby's peeking out the window. So we see Swashby's little crab friend a lot in this book. Um, it is, whoops, that's like his little buddy, which I love, because um, I love crabs, uh, not just to eat, but also as animals. I think they're really cool animals. So uh, that was Swashby and the Sea. I love that story. Um, it just shows you're never too late to make friends, and you can be friendly even if somebody else is maybe being a little grumpy or not so friendly that kind of thing so you can always have the power to make a friend and to be friendly um, and hey for you older kids out there there's something that you can ask your mom and dad to kind of help you learn so this is Swashby. remember in the beginning we said he was kind of like a recluse or a hermit and we talked about how that means you don't want any friends you don't want to be around anybody you just kind of want to live by yourself so if you live near me in North Carolina, there was somebody kind of like Swashby, and he's called the Fort Fisher Hermit. And if you live near me in North Carolina, you can ask your mom and dad to kind of Google that and they can teach you about it a little bit. He was a real life hermit or a recluse. He went and lived um, in like a little bunker down at the um, down at the ocean for 17 years he lived by himself and the only things that he ate were animals that he got out of the ocean or vegetables that he grew there um, and he was just by himself all the time and he's kind of famous for it because he was there in that one spot for so long so if you are older you can ask your mom and dad um, they can actually go find where the Fort Fisher Hermit lived and you can go see it. 
Um, but I wonder if the Fort Fisher Hermit would have stayed a hermit for so long if this little girl had moved in next to him because I don't think anybody can resist this little girl. She's so cute with her little nose and how she plays and sings. Um, she's just adorable. So I bet if the Fort Fisher Hermit had a friend like that living next door, maybe he wouldn't have been alone for all those years. So anyway, um, I'm reading some of the comments from the video. And yes, my hair is purple, just like a juice drink. So <laughs> we decided to change it up a little bit. If you guys know me in real life, you know I kind of like to... I don't know, have fun with my hair and do fun things. So it's purple today. It might be a different color later on. Who knows? Uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but yes, purple hair today, seashell earrings today, all in honor of the beach and Swashby and the sea. So I hope you liked that book. Um, talk to your parents and maybe someday you can go visit the Fort Fisher Hermit um, where he lived and kind of see where a hermit would live, kind of like Mr. Swashby until he made this friend. So don't forget, you can always be friendly to someone, even if they're being a grump to you, right? You can always be friendly. You can always ask them if they want to play. Remember in the book, the little girl brought him oatmeal cookies and she kept trying and kept trying to be friends with him and he ended up really enjoying their friendship. So you can be a good friend out there too, even if you live next to a grumpy old Mr. Swashby, okay? All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, stay well and keep reading. Bye.